to Soap Making with Deschutes Public Library. My name is Roxanne and I'm a community librarian at the Lapine Library. I've been making melt and pour soap for approximately three years. Melt and pour soap making is fantastic for beginners. It essentially is second phase soap making, which means someone else has put together the soap base. The nice thing about melt and pour soap making is it requires minimal safety gear, it's great for individuals who may live in an apartment and have a rental agreement they need to adhere to, or those who have small or poorly ventilated kitchens. It requires a microwave, and you are able to add a variety of ingredients to your soap. During today's program, I'm going to show you how to make two beginner-friendly bars of soap. Before we get started, Let's talk about Soap Safety 101. Toward that end, do not rebatch store-bought soaps as there could be unintended chemistry. Do not use essential oils, particularly undiluted due to health concerns related to aerosolized particulates. Pets and children can be particularly sensitive. Do not use cooking additives such as vanilla extract. Do not use unsafe or unapproved ingredients or additives. Non-dissolvable elements such as coffee grounds, oatmeal, or floral bits should be knocked off before use to avoid going down drains. Here's my rule of thumb. If you are unsure or cannot find verification via an authoritative source, forget about it and don't add it. Only use ingredients that are specifically created for use in melt and pour soap making. Always check the manufacturer's packaging. Do not use cured soap on skin without a wrist or inner elbow skin test first, particularly if you have allergies, intolerances, or are sensitive to dyes and perfumes. Do not make unfounded claims. Beware the FDA, as the manufacturing of cosmetics, drugs, and food are regulated according to strict health and safety guidelines, which includes detailed batch record note keeping, mailing labels, and factory setup, to name a few criteria. This program is for fun. No promises are made beyond this soap is designed to clean your hands, and prospective small business owners should diligently research all applicable rules and regulations. If you are interested in starting a handmade soap business, consider scheduling a Book a Librarian appointment with a Deschutes Public Library community librarian. Now let's get started with our first bar of soap. Select and prep your work area with newspaper or the like. Ensure your workstation is level and an appropriate place for your soap to cure undisturbed for four hours. Dome the appropriate safety gear, such as an apron, goggles, and oven mitts. Gather your tools and ingredients. For this project, you will need a microwave, a microwave-safe pouring container, and saran wrap, which is off-screen. A cutting implement. I'm using a soap cutting tool, also known as a bench scraper. Honey-infused soap base, stirring sticks. Isopropyl alcohol or rubbing alcohol of 91%. This solution can be used to break up air bubbles when sprayed immediately after pouring. It can be used between melt and pour layers to help the layers adhere, and it can be used to prep a mold to avoid bubbles as well. You'll also need fire cider mica, a pre-cut loofah disc, and a hexagon bee mold. Begin by dicing three plus ounces of honey infused soap base into small cube sized pieces. Then add the diced soap base into a microwave safe pouring container. Cover with saran wrap and set aside. Prepare the mold by spritzing with isopropyl alcohol. Add the loofah disc to the hexagon bee mold, ensuring it does not touch the bee side of the mold and set aside. Use your hands to adjust the loofah to fit, if need be. Add a few spritz of isopropyl alcohol to the condiment cup containing orange fire cider mica, then stir and set aside. Mica, unlike liquid colorant, tends to be opaque and iridescent as opposed to translucent. The color appears more rich in melt and pour soap 
versus cold process soap. And adding isopropyl alcohol not only turns it into a liquid that we can more easily work with, but it also eradicates clumps that we might otherwise be troubled with. Pause here if need be. Place the saran wrap covered microwave safe pouring container in the microwave. You'll want to microwave for 15 seconds at a time so as to avoid burning the soap base. Depending on your microwave settings, one minute should be plenty. Remove the melted soap base from the microwave and then take off the saran wrap. Stir in the liquid mica. Now carefully pour melted soap into the mold. Spritz with isopropyl alcohol to remove any air bubbles. This soap should harden in one hour, but allow it to cure for four. Then remove and trim excess edges. To create your second bar of soap, you will need a cutting implement, lavender infused soap base, a microwave safe pouring container, and saran wrap, iris purple, and blackberry mica, stirring sticks, isopropyl alcohol, and lavender floral bits, as well as a rectangular silicone mold. To get started, dice five plus ounces of melt and pour lavender infused soap base into small cube sized pieces. Then add one third of the diced soap base into a microwave safe pouring container, cover with saran wrap, and set aside. Add a few spritz of isopropyl alcohol to the condiment cup containing blackberry mica, then stir and set aside. Place the saran wrap covered microwave safe pouring container in the microwave and as before, microwave for 15 seconds at a time. Remove the melted soap base from the microwave and then remove the saran wrap. Go ahead and stir in the blackberry liquid mica. Prep the mold by spritzing with isopropyl alcohol. Now, carefully pour the first layer of melted soap into the mold. Spritz with isopropyl alcohol and allow the first layer to harden for 30 minutes, but no more than 90. Begin prepping the second layer. Add a few spritz of isopropyl alcohol to the condiment cup containing iris purple mica, then stir and set aside. Add one third diced soap base into a microwave safe pouring container, cover with saran wrap and microwave for 15 seconds at a time. Stir in iris purple mica. Avoid my mistake and prep your layers by spritzing with isopropyl alcohol. Then pour your second layer of soap. Spritz with isopropyl alcohol and allow the second layer to harden for 30 minutes, but again, no more than 90. Get the last layer ready. Add the last one third of diced soap base into a microwave safe pouring container Cover with saran wrap and microwave for 15 seconds at a time. 
Prep the layers by spritzing the second with isopropyl alcohol. Pour the melted soap base into the mold. Spritz with isopropyl alcohol. Wait 30 seconds to one minute after pouring and sprinkle lavender bits before a skin can form along the top of the soap. Allow the soap to cure for four hours, then remove. We just created two bars of soap via the melt and pour method or second phase soap making process. There is also the cold process, also known as first phase soap making. Cold process soap making is a great option for those interested in customizing soap down to the last ingredient. It involves using base ingredients like lye and requires good ventilation, boiling, critical safety gear, and a longer cure time. To know more, use your Deschutes public library card to access Creative Bug and watch Lindsay Stone's video entitled Handmade Soap. Well, that concludes today's soap making program. I hope you all had a blast getting your hands dirty making two bars of beginner friendly melt and pour soap. Until next time.